this, at this time, I'd like to introduce to you a man who's become a, a great inspiration to me over the last several months um, while I worked with him on, on the possibility of him coming to be our Veterans Day program speaker. His uh, stories and his experiences um, are very moving and very inspiring on a great level. And his professionalism and dedication to veterans is second to none. Um, and, and, and in seeing the things that he's been able to do and the things that he's been able to accomplish, it was it was a no-brainer, so to speak, in my book when it comes to uh, picking a speaker that, that we would pick a guy um, that has this level of professionalism, this level of dedication to our veterans. So with, with no further ado, I would like to introduce to you, and I'd like you to make him feel welcome, um, Staff Sergeant Johnny Joey Jones, USMC, retired. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Happy Veterans Day. Um, it's kind of hard to say, it? it's almost odd. Happy Veterans Day. Uh, a common misconception is that today is that day back in May called Memorial Day, but it's not. Today is Veterans Day. I had um, quite a bit prepared about where it came from, but who am I to give a history lesson to this audience? So, just to that point. <laughs> no, really. Um, We've been celebrating this day as it is uh, since the 1950s, and it changes with each generation as far as what it means. What veterans mean to this country today um, is of equal importance, but it's also in a different nature than generations prior, because for the first time, information and technology are such that you know what we're doing as we do it. Um, he said, the mountains of Afghanistan, um, you, you know what's going on there as much as I do, and I've been there. You know what's going on in Iraq as much as I do, and I've been there. So you're a part of this. Uh, in my remarks, I wrote this down. I'm not going to go by it. It's going to be all off the cuff. You're going to hear what I have to say. Uh, to write a speech and bring it here to you without knowing you is uh, it's just not my style. So I wrote some things down, but I really I just want to talk to you today. I'm from Georgia. So I talk with a draw and I talk really slow. We may be here for a while. <laughs> I'm also a Marine, so reading this off the paper just isn't my thing either. So it may be kind of difficult over the next few minutes. But I hope that you get a little bit of what I've learned in my short time on this earth, 28 years, about what it means to be a veteran and what this society can take from that and what we as veterans hold as a responsibility, not, um, not a credential, and not a privilege, a responsibility of public service that we'll take for the rest of our lives. We've raised our right hand in support of this country to defend those we love and to defend those that don't love us because that's what this country is all about. I tell people what makes this country the greatest country on the face of this earth, and if we have any foreign dignitaries here, just bear with me. I like your country too. But what makes this country the greatest country on the face of this earth is that the amount of money we have in the bank, the size and might of our military, or even this amazing political system that we enjoy every day. What makes this country the greatest country on the face of this earth is so much simpler. It's really, really easy. It's because we wake up every day, and as a society, we say, what can we do today to make it a little more fair, a little better, as ambiguous as that term is and as powerful as that term is, what can we do to make this world a better place before we go to sleep tonight? And oftentimes that involves war and conflict. But that's not the end game. Hopefully that's not even the mean and method. War isn't the game we practice for in the military. War is the fight in the parking lot after the game. What we practice for is mission accomplishment, and that mission comes in various forms humanitarian effort. It comes in a lot of ways. War 
is something that we experience, but not something we long for. War is something we endure, but not something we look forward to. We, we do live in the greatest country. Not because we're perfect, but because we recognize our imperfections. And our military is a shining example of overcoming stereotypes, inequalities, socioeconomic barriers, and becoming equal. Which is something this country has strived for for hundreds of years and will continue to for hundreds more. Like I said, I've lost my place. Lord help me. <laughs> Thanks to an IED from the Taliban back in 2010, I lost both of my legs above the knee and severe damage to both of my wrists are fused and I almost lost my right forearm. I, you know, good on them, but I won. They didn't. I left the battlefield and I came back to Washington, D.C. to Walter Reed. And if you know, it's actually in wasn't Silver Spring, Maryland, now it's in Bethesda, it's so confusing. Uh, but I came back to Washington, D.C. Um, and got to see those monuments I saw when I watched Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. <laughs> and I thought, wow, this is what it's all about. And we memorialize these generations past in stone and in movies and the names we pass down to our children, but really they were people like you and I and their experiences their hardships or struggles are shared by all people. Living a full life isn't living a normal one. It's living one with obstacles and barriers and adversity to overcome that you just happen to live with rather than in spite of, because that gets you nowhere. So my adversity was physical injury. And then my adversity became suicide, a dear friend coming back from Iraq. And I realized early on that I was going to have to do something about it. The injury, what happened to me, was not hard to deal with because I had responsibility. I had people I cared about, I had people I wanted to take care of and that were there to take care of me. But the friends, the 22 veterans a day that may commit suicide today, that's a big deal. We have people who raise their right hand and become heroes in my eyes, serve this country and come home and feel alone. And I promise you, that's in no part because of you because you're here today. But you stand as a testament of how this country could be. This room should be packed from wall to wall. And I believe we'll get it there. So during my time of recovery, I became, I guess what you would call, an advocate. I didn't mean to. I don't even know how to talk to a crowd. But I wanted to talk about my experiences, share them, and hopefully bring new light on who we are, my generation and all generations of veterans. That landed the job on Capitol Hill, um, haphazardly. The Commandant Marine Corps tried to fire me, but the Chairman of the Committee tried to keep me. So, you <laughs> want you write some checkbook. Um, and from there, I went to Georgetown University. Um, trust me, they'll let anybody in there these days. I know. <laughs> really, it's, it's times are tough. So, graduating from Georgetown. Um, I went to Texas and became the executive director of a military nonprofit called Boot Campaign with the sole purpose of raising awareness. And when we do raise money, we give it back out as fast as we can because that stuff will burn a hole in your pocket. But the idea is to teach people and share stories of these men and women who have served. And we're doing a great job at it. So when I got the opportunity to come here and speak to you all today, <coughs> it was a no-brainer. Really. There could be five people in this audience or 50 or 500. I was happy to be here. But there's a dynamic, there's a group of people in this country that are special, in my mind, and that's the student veteran. Uh, because you're coming from one world and into another. So I, I thought I would bring a message today um, for the veterans here going to school. The challenges still exist beyond those of life and death. Service and sacrifice begin before the battlefield, in my mind. And service and sacrifice is when you've missed the important things in your family, or you've missed the birth of your child, or your spouse doesn't understand why you're away for so much, or why you have to spend all night cleaning this already spotless uniform. Like I said, it's not war, but it's mission accomplishment. That's what we train for, and that's what it's all about. The mission now is much different for student veterans than it was a year or five years ago when you were in Iraq and Afghanistan. 
the mission now, well, let me tell you. To the student veterans in this audience, stop complaining and start leading. That's the message I have for you today. We're older, we're more experienced. We understand that nothing compares to situations of life and death. However, you're here and this is your mission. And what is at stake is not only your own future and welfare, but the livelihood, the leadership and wisdom of your entire generation. Our generation was defined on September 11, 2001. I'll take that back. Our generation was challenged on September 11, 2001, but we get to define it. This war has been a part of who we are, but it's not all of who we are, and we have left the service to go on and do other things for this country. Uh, you may feel that tests of numbers and words pales in comparison to bullets and bombs. But luckily for you and I, you're no longer in a profession of life and death, you are, however, tasked with becoming a more intelligent, a more informed, and more integral part of this society, the one you fought to protect. These tests and papers are how you do it. Lead the younger and less experienced in your classrooms, as you did those on the battlefield. Learn from your professors, as you did your squad leader. No matter the mission, which now is an education, we all face obstacles, and as student veterans, you now face new obstacles. The mission accomplishment here will change the trajectory of your life forever, just as war and the military. And perhaps it'll allow you to change the world for those who are lucky enough to not go to war, perhaps to serve, to protect this country. To everyone here, I say our veterans are heroes. Not because they went to war, or because they have shiny medals on their chest. No, these men and women are heroes because they care. And it's that simple. They chose to put others' best interests above their own and face life-threatening challenges with courage and bravery to make this world a better place and this country a safer one. Today, these veterans are reintegrating into an uncertain economy and an ever-changing society. But something tells me these men and women, if no others, can make sense from chaos and find a solution when we all are seeing the problems. Today we honor and celebrate our veterans. And I mean that we celebrate those that are here with us today. We will remember the others in May. Today we will celebrate those that are here with us. Thank you. We honor your accomplishments, both yesterday and our younger veterans' accomplishments that will happen tomorrow. So what I'd like for you all to do is take a moment to stand up, stretch your legs, and join me in a round of applause for all those that have served this country and that are here with us today. And Chancellor said it best, God bless our veterans and God bless America.